Hey, what's up everybody? This is Scott Wack and Pete. Today we're gonna to run you through a chest workout, but with this one, like the shoulder workout and stuff before, we're gonna explain everything and exactly how and why. We're gonna explain technique, sets, reps, all that sort of stuff. So we started with the assisted pull-up. I start with that just about on everything to get my lats and shoulders and everything warmed up. Uh, we started with like three sets, 15 or 20, and then straight over to band work. So on the band work, we're doing internal and external rotation. Uh, like I said in previous videos, you're not wanting to overextend. It's right here as you're going external, and it's just right here as you're going internal. And you do 20 on each, on each way, on each arm. And then you'll see us grab some fives and do like this on the rotation like this. Anyway, all this is trying to warm up the shoulder joint because again, to prevent injury and or strengthen the rotator cuff, if you're younger, as you get older, we're doing it to prevent injury. So y'all be sure to warm up your shoulders really, really good before you hit chest, shoulders, or anything with upper body. So whenever you're doing these, like I said before, try to keep this right here parallel with the ground and go up to about your ears if that's the rotation you want to do. Some people are more, are more flexible than others. You may be able to go a little bit past that rotation, but at least try to get it to your ears. And if you're not flexible enough to get it to your ears, you need to get, start stretching and get your flexibility back because everything on your shoulder is way, way too tight. So parallel up to the ears. We're wanting about 20 to 30 of these, super, super light. We're not working the muscle, we're just warming everything up. All right, so what we're starting with, I'm counting these two sets today, but mainly we're starting with two kind of warm-up sets. So I'm doing, I don't know how many sets it's gonna take on this today, but I'm doing sets of 10 until I can't do 10 anymore. And then we'll go back down for probably one more set after that to be sure we her more plus a drop set. And like I said, if you add drop sets, giant sets, pause sets, stuff like that, that's another way to add intensity to the workout. And somebody asked me what a drop set was. So a drop set basically for me is pick a weight, do it for your set rep range, and then cut the weight in half and try to double it if you can. So that, that to me is a drop set. So y'all try that, add that in your workout, and it'll really, you'll really feel it if you do it right. Let me add one more thing to this. So feedback on the videos, a lot of people, they don't, some of the people ain't listened to my explanation of my rep range in the videos. Um, so my whole thing, except for stretching out the lats and uh, flexing the triceps at the end, is basically keeping time under tension if you want to build muscle. Well, if you're resting at the bottom or locking out at the top, you're taking tension off the muscle. So when I come down, I'm an inch from the bottom and about an inch from lockout. By doing that, that makes the sets way, way harder. You have to use less weight to do that because you're not resting in between each rep when you come up and you lock out. And so whenever I do that, that's to keep more time under tension in order to build more muscle to get as much blood in there as possibly can and tear down the muscles as possible can. All right, so Bryce is doing the same thing. He's not going all the way down to here. He's not locking. He's got long arms, so he's not locking all the way out. What that's doing is taking and putting every bit of that right here the entire time. So, like I said, there's a difference in moving weight and training the muscle, and we're training the muscle today. All right, so here's another tip on being able to get these from your knees to your shoulders. Depending on whether you want to do them both at the same time or one at a time, I like doing one at a time. So you put them on the edge of your legs, lean forward, kick it back and then you catch it up top with your shoulder. So it looks kind of like this. So that's another thing too. If you're spotting somebody on this, ask their preference whether they want to be spotted by the wrist or by the elbows. Um, for beginners, I would recommend that you spot from their wrist just in case they get up top and it starts to slide one way or another. You can grab their wrist and pull it back out to prevent it from falling on them. More advanced lifters typically like their elbows because whenever you grip their wrist, if you grip it hard, sometimes it make you feel like you're lo they're losing their grip. So they like it by their elbows and they're, they've been training long enough to know that if it starts to go, they can throw it over 
and miss hitting themselves. So, and or the spotter, if he's trained enough, he can catch it and get it out of the way. So that's just a little tip on try to figure out what's better for the person actually doing the lift instead of just coming up and doing what you want to do. Like that. See? Like that. Three. Four. Five. Good. Come on. I ain't helped you yet. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. Ten. Good. So just like that right there, how he went up with the first one started to come back. It wasn't because the weight was too heavy. It's because he got out of the groove. So when I had my hand on his wrist right there, I was able to pull it back off of him to keep it from going on over. So that's kind of what I'm talking about. When you go with beginners, it's because the weight's lighter, uh, you can pull it you can pull it off them with their wrist a little bit better and you don't have to grip the wrist as hard so they don't lose grip on theirs. So for me, a tip on spotting, beginners grab the wrist, intermediate or advanced, then you can go to the elbows. So let's see, we did 80s, I think we've done 80s, 90s, 100s, 110s, 120s, 130s. So we're sets of 10. On the 130s, I had to have a spot on the last few. So now that I know that, now we're going back down and go back down to a moderate weight and we're gonna rep out as many as we can. So on this last set, I'll go back down to 100s and we'll just rep them out and see how many we can do. Drop it, cut it in half to 50 and do the same thing. So hopefully try to double it, but I don't know if that's gonna happen. But Anyway, we're going to go to a failure. All right. So on this one, what we're going to do is we're going to slow down the tempo on it. So it's going to be either a one, two, three up, one, two, three down, or one, two up, one, two down, uh, something like that, which all it's doing is adding time and attention. You can't use as much weight doing that, but you're adding a lot more stress to the muscle. So. On this too, whenever you're doing a, a plate loaded uh, machine for me, see where the handles hit? So the handles are just on an incline for me, if the handles hit right, right below basically the collarbone right here, for me, I feel it more whenever I go to push up because it's more like a true incline movement if the seat is adjustable. So the more you adjust it up, the less of an incline it is. When you adjust it down, the more of an incline it is. So the problem is you just don't want it to go too far down because then your front delt and your shoulders taking over instead of actually working the upper chest, which is what you want. So a ride along a little bit lower than your collarbone is for me, is typically the perfect spot to be able to get the right up in here in the chest, upper chest. Range here for, for this for this particular thing uh, we're gonna do three sets we're gonna try to hit 10 each time so adjust the weight accordingly to whatever you can try to get 10 uh, if you go too heavy on your second set which this might be for me but if you go too heavy on the second set back it off for your third set for something that you know you can get 10 because you're gonna eventually do a drop set
There you go. Nice. All right, so on these, hold your hands straight, your fingers. All right, I've explained this before in other videos, but he's got his shoulder blades together, his chest poked out, his fingers pointed, okay? So with me, when you get the first few reps, when your palms are open like that, I feel that it's like it runs straight through and goes straight to my chest. When I start getting wore out, that's when I actually grip it for the last few reps and bring the forearms into it to help me get those last few and squeeze together. So again, shoulder blades together, chest poked out, palms open. We're not doing this. Seat back. See how my shoulders are now into it? We're not doing that. Shoulder blades together, chest poked out, arms slightly bent, fingers straight. So what we're doing here, this kind of mimics, if you have one of these, if you have an assist to pull up at your gym, we just got done doing really ugly dips, all three of us, for two sets of 20-ish. And uh, well, Sheldon didn't do 20, but so on this right here, what we're mimicking is close grip bench. So you're gonna feel a lot in your tricep, but you should be feeling it right there. Same as the pec deck when we was doing the partials. You're trying to hit that middle. Well, this right here is gonna hit the middle too. So the way you do it is, first you put man weight on there. And then, all right, so you push down on it, poke your peach out, grab the sides, and then and when you come down, you want to squeeze right in here as hard as you can in order to get as much blood in there as you can. So what that's doing, again, is hitting right in there in that middle, that middle area right there. That's what we're trying to hit. We done one, that's a kind of a heavy set. The next set I do will probably be a lighter set and just repping out as many times as we can. One more tip on doing the assisted pull up uh, to use it for your, your inner chest is so, when you keep your elbows in when you go heavy, you're gonna feel it in your triceps a lot, but you're gonna feel it in here too. The lighter you get when you do drop sets, you'll see me flutter my elbows out. So what that does, you're still using that, but it takes more stress on the chest instead of on the tricep then when you flutter your elbows out. That's the same thing like when you go to bench. When you go to bench, when you go heavy, you wanna keep your elbows tucked for safety reasons because you don't wanna you don't want to tear anything. If you keep it out, when you go light, you're gonna feel it more in your chest area. So on these, when you go light, flutter your elbows out. Okay, so that's the end of our chest workout. So today we started with assisted pull-ups. We've done that. Again, all that does, loosen up the back, loosens up shoulders. Went over to uh, the band, done some band work, which I always try to do before shoulders and chest. And then uh, dumbbells to get the rotations, loosen everything up. Then we went straight over and done sets of 10 until we couldn't do any more on incline, draw back down, do one max set of whatever, and then we've done a drop set. Went over to the plate, uh, plate loaded uh, incline press same thing but we slowed this slowed the tempo down we done three sets of ten there with a drop set went to the pec deck done three sets of ten there with a drop set and then we done half reps to target the middle chest and then we came over here and we done two sets of dips that were got off of ugly supposed to be sets of 20 but then we done the press down on the assisted pull up too and that's working the inner chest right there and at the end flaring the elbows really getting that inner chest right there. So I hope this workout helps. Pretty much everything was in the in the 10 to 15 rep range uh, with the exception of the incline dumbbell. Everything else was three sets. Well, 10 to 15 reps plus a drop set. So I again, I hope this workout helped you. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you try this workout, you'll probably be able to be fat with muscles. So y'all stay tuned for the next video and y'all subscribe to the channel and click that little bell. So that way y'all know every Tuesday at 7 p.m. we'll be posting a new video. So that way y'all don't miss it. Thank you.